Hey everyone, uh, my name is Sean. Welcome back to Crafting a Life I Want. Uh, today, as you can see, I've been building myself a workbench recently and it's mostly done at this point. Um, I'm just getting ready to attach my vise, which you see here, which is a uh, woodworker's vise. It'll be attached to the, the front apron of the bench. I didn't videotape the bench because I just followed uh, Paul Seller's design. And I'll link to the design uh, in the description of this video below, but didn't think uh, watching me repeat that was uh, going to be very useful. I will be doing a uh, an assembly video after you know this vice is installed, the final assembly of everything, and getting it all set up. But for today, uh, I am focused on getting the vice installed. And now this vice, go ahead and turn you around. So this vice is a seven by nine uh, vice, and what that means is that the jaw width here is seven inches. And then the nine is that it opens up nine inches. And now this is upside down and mostly taken apart at this point. Um, I wanted to take it apart to attempt to uh, do the least amount of damage to my apron. And so I'm putting it here inside of my left leg. And the goal is to slip the inside portion through from the back which means my hole only has to be roughly seven inches wide rather than the nine inches that the base has has to have for mounting purposes inside. Now this vise is, as you can see, a Shane Solutions. And I couldn't find a whole bunch of information on this type of vise. From what I did find is that it was shipped with, um, it was shipped with uh, like wood shop tables and things like that as like an add-on option. But when I went to look at it, um, it was a Facebook marketplace find. And when I went to look at it, it looked really solid, it looks similar to a Yoast vise as far as quality of craftsmanship is concerned, um, things like that. But I thought it'd be, uh, you know, for 25 bucks, I thought it'd be a great addition to my workbench. So after laying out the bare minimum of space I would need to hopefully get the back jaw through the face of the apron, I go ahead and drill out the corners and then go to my jigsaw to uh, finish cutting the space in between the two. I don't know if it's because I was working on a vertical surface rather than a horizontal one, but my jigsaw was chattering a lot while I was doing this and I'm not entirely sure why. So if any of you have an idea as to why it was bouncing up and down as much as it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could let me know in the comments below. As you can see, there were several stages of needing to make that hole bigger before I was able to get those back jaws to come through to the face. After routing out the depth of the wooden jaws were going to be, I then go through and start routing out the deeper area where the metal jaw of the vise is going to rest. I should have done this with a chisel. I tried to do it with a router and ended up with a really uneven base. Um, I do end up chiseling out the middle section, but like I said, it would have been better served to do the whole thing with a chisel.
So the back half of the vise is now how I want it. Um, I sunk this down, uh, this section down three quarters of an inch, and it's flush with this section. And then I'm gonna put a piece of wood that goes from the bottom of the jaw all the way up to the top of my apron um, on top of this once we get everything installed. And then that will be my face and it will be quarter inch thick, which is what this depth is. And that will be flush with the face of the apron, which is what I'm going for here. Um, these two holes are for uh, additional uh, mounting to the apron. You can see how they're countersunk and it came with screws to kind of uh, do that. And then these two holes are for mounting the board to uh, the face of the jaw. And I believe I would come through those from the other side, but I'll have to, sorry, I'll have to take this out and check because they're a little countersunk on this side too. So uh, I am gonna take you down below, just like this. As you can see, up through here, you can see where those clamps are holding it flush against the top. And we are flush against the underside of the table here. Well, as you can see, that pop-up bench dog does not reach the top of my bench. I attempted to remove it, thinking that I could replace the piece of metal with a longer one, but then decided that it wouldn't sit flush with the top of the vice jaw. So scrap that idea, and what you can see here is I am marking out the area on the underside of the bench to sink the base of the um, vice a little farther so that it sits up higher on the face of the apron.
mounting plate has been dropped down farther into the base of the bench. It effectively is raising the jaw on the apron side. Uh, what that caused is that the offset for the jaw that wrapped around, which was about a half an inch, isn't big enough anymore. So I'm sawing out the sides and then using a overly aggressive chiseling technique to clear that out, which left me with a significant amount of tear out. It's not very pretty, but it gets the job done and nobody's going to see it at the end. The other adjustment that needed to be made is that we raised the jaw of the vise up high enough that it's so close to the top of the apron, having this little bump out at the top to fill that gap isn't, isn't really possible anymore. In all likelihood, it would have broken out in the process of cutting it. So I'm just clearing that out, and then we'll deal with the slight offset uh, a little later on. So off camera and before I installed this front jaw, I went ahead and put the bolts back into the base on the underside of the bench. I didn't think you needed to watch that again, uh, but I'll go ahead and assemble the rest of the jaw and then uh, that will be wrapping up part one of the Carpenter's Vice installation. Part two is going to be custom jaw liners that I'll build and I hope you'll join me for that. This Carpenter's Vice installation was a lot of fun. I learned a lot throughout the process, and I hope some of my mistakes will keep others from making the same uh, if they're tackling the same type of thing. If anybody would like to help support the channel, you can check out our Teespring link in the description below. There's lots of cool things there, and any money made goes directly back into the channel to help buy supplies or upgrade any of my setup. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe below, and we'll hopefully see you for part two.